I want to show you guys how to create what's called a vector mask. Um, and this is something that you will do on occasion, you know, every once in a while, instead of using a raster mask because you want a nice clean edge. This is an example. You know, it's kind of a simple example of, you know, doing something. But I want to show you a few things with vector masks, which are pretty cool. So I'm going to go to the start file here. And I've got the original uh, image right there. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to create a shape and use it as a mask. Now, there's a couple ways to do this. One way is to come over to your tools panel over here and draw a shape. You guys can use the pen tool. You can use, you can import it from another program as a path. I'm going to go over and use the custom shape tool. And I've already got it set up, but I'm going to come up top here. And before I start drawing out here, uh, what I want to do is make sure that I'm not going to create a shape layer. Because a shape layer, you guys, if I click on this button right up here and I click and drag, it's going to create this kind of thing over here. Okay, and I don't, I don't want to do that. As a matter of fact, I always forget to do this. I want to create just a path. So I'll click on path here. And if you guys are using the pen tool, like I said, you can do that too. I also want to use a custom shape. You guys are going to see we have custom shapes here. So if you choose a custom shape, you can go to the shape option here, custom shape picker. And what I do is typically, you guys, you're only going to see a few in here. But if you go to the arrow on the corner here, go to the menu options, you'll see all, and you can bring all these in. And these are all the different kinds of shapes that they have available in Photoshop. So if I take a look in here, I'll see somewhere. Oh, there we go. There's a puzzle piece. I can click on the puzzle piece to select it. Come out to the page out here, and I'll just click and drag. Use my shift key to constrain it. And you guys, it's also like Illustrator. If you hold down the space bar while you're drawing this thing, you can reposition it. Once I let go of the space bar, I can let go of the mouse and then the shift key, and I've got myself a path. Now, to create a vector mask, here's what we do. I'm going to go back to my move tool over here. Look at your layers. You've got a layer selected. Come down here. You're going to see the mask icon. If I click add layer mask, you guys, it's just going to create a raster mask, and we don't want to do that. So let me undo that. We want to create a vector mask. So with the vector shape out there, come down to the add layer mask button down here, and if you control click on Windows or command click on Mac, you'll create a vector mask. Now, this is kind of sucks actually because the way it works is it's going to mask out everything except for what's inside the shape. Now, I want to fix that. I want to go the opposite. There's an easy way to do this. So if you want to pick the opposite of the shape, what I can do is go over to, let's say, the select tool over here. Click on the path. You guys can select it right there. I actually have, you guys won't see this bounding box. I turn that on all the time, but you're going to see show bounding box right here. You probably see something like this. If you come up top, you guys are going to see that we've got a couple buttons up here. The one to the right here, subtract from shape area, is what we want. So that just literally inver inverses it. That's pretty much it. All right, now I'll go back to my move tool. I can click to deselect or come out there, select the picture, whatever. Control H or Command H, you guys, is a good way to hide all the points and stuff. And I'll just do a quick, just for this example, you guys, I'll do a quick uh, layer style here, the FX. And I'll say like bevel emboss, that sort of thing, and yeah, that looks great, whatever. I'll click OK. Now I'm going to duplicate this layer, so I'm just going to hit Command J or Control J on Windows. And I just want to inverse this and then move it around. So you guys can see I've got this one selected, let me move it down. And I'll inverse it. So once again, I'll just make sure I've got the layer mask selected here. You guys can see it's selected now. Go to my selection tool over here on the left. Click on the path. Make sure it's selected. And then click this one right here, the first button, which says Add to Shape Area. And there we go. It's also got the layer style and all that sort of thing going on. Now, the great thing about vector masks, you guys, is you can always add to them or reshape them, resize them. If I come over here to my selection tool, you'll see that we've got path selection and direct selection. If I go to the direct selection tool and click on the points out here, what I'm supposed to be able to do is to select each one of these points, click and drag, and reshape this thing. Now, if you typically, you guys saw what I just did there. I click to deselect and then come back to it and kind of sneak up to the line like Illustrator, click on it, and then you can click on a point to move it. Now, if you want to completely add, let, let's say add a whole big part to this or whatever, you guys can use the pen tool right now to add... We can also come to our shapes over here, and let's say I want to add, a, I don't know, an ellipse or something. Come over here, click and drag. Now here's something you guys got to watch. Before you do this, to add to the mask, the vector mask, make sure you look up here and see what it's going to do. Now if we say add to shape area, or add to path area rather, click on that one, and click and drag, you'll see it's going to add to it. So it's going to combine it. Now if I go back to the selection tool, now these are, are separate still, but if I go back to the selection tool over here on the, in the uh, tools panel, 
come out here and click on these. You can still move them independently, which is kind of cool. All right, so you still got them separate. If you want to make them one shape, there's a button up here called Combine. That just makes one big shape. Anyway, you guys, there's a lot of things we can do with vector masks like this. We can rasterize them if you guys go up to the Layers panel, or the, uh, excuse me, the Layers menu up here. There's a whole section under here for um, working with vector masks, things like that, or being able to rasterize them, that sort of thing. So a lot of things we can do with these. They're actually pretty cool. They create a nice crisp edge, and if I hit Control-H or Command-H, you'll see it goes away, and there we go. There's our vector mask. So that's working with vector masks in Photoshop.